Oh, come on, man, set up your camera. Please, hurry up, I've been waiting for this car for a year. Come on, come on, come on. I'm ready. And the first thing I'd like to tell you about this automobile is that this company was built from the scratch, it simply didn't exist. They decided, we want to make cars, and we want this type of car and that type of car, and it's gonna cost you like, well, give us 70,000 bucks, and we'll make it for you. 70 coral, it's only 70,000 bucks. Buying it in America is just a little bit more expensive than buying some of the Russian cars in Russia. Those who paid like two years in advance got this car for around 70,000 bucks, and today you can buy it for 80 or 90,000. I guess here in Russia it's gonna cost like 160 or 170,000. And that's almost the same money you can spend on a Dodge Ram TRX, at least for today. And what attracts me in this car is that this is a kind of a new philosophy, new technology, this is a new car, and this car is pretty goddamn fast. Of course, this car's got some disadvantages that piss me off, and I'm gonna tell you about them later. But this is so much fun. It's absolutely amazing. The gas pedal is so responsive. He just pressed it and Right now, I'm heading to my friend's company where I bought my TRX from. I want to show them this car. And I want them to find such a car for me and count how much it's gonna cost me to get it here with the best configuration. I hope they're gonna be ready by evening. And meanwhile, I'm gonna be shooting this test drive and studying this automobile. Because the main question of this test drive sounds like, do I have to keep my T-Rex or sell it and buy this car? What the hell do you need it for? Dude, I need this fucker. Holy fuck, I'm kinda confused. Cause I like my TRX really much. It's an amazing car. But I also want to buy an electric car. They told me you're selling your TRX. This is such a hard decision and today I'm gonna be comparing these cars. You really want to change it for the Solus bucket? Why Solus? Cause buying this car is same as picking up young hookers in the club. Okay. They're beautiful, but they've got nothing yeah. to talk about. Okay. You'll be having fun for a week and then you get bored. That's what it's about. Well, it's blow job is amazing. Okay, I agree that you are right in some way, that when I have enough of it, I'll settle down. And you are right, it's Solus. But the whole world is getting taken over by these Solus automobiles. And I'm just trying to keep up. And I want to use these technologies. And what if my Ram TRX gets broken? I'm gonna have so much pain in the ass. And much less pain comparing to a BMWs. Okay, if we could buy these cars in Russia officially, I wouldn't be so concerned about the maintaining of this automobile. But I'm afraid one day it can turn into a tin can. Nevertheless, I'm pretty sure this car could become a winner in this duel with my TRX. But unfortunately, even though the TRX doesn't have any official dealership here either, still you can get parts for this car easily, that's not a big deal. But this car is all about the software and lots of unique stuff. And it's not gonna be as easy to get as for TRX. The shipping would definitely become a problem. Even for that company owned by my friends. And of course, comparing these cars side to side is absolutely incorrect. It's all about selling one car and buying another. And also, it's absolutely incredible that they give 8 years warranty for both the engine and the battery. And also, they give 5 years warranty for the car in general. So their 5 years are 60,000 miles. I still remember how amazed I was when I saw this automobile on a picture for the first time. It was the same color as this one. And even though more than 60% of my audience told me they don't like the design of this automobile, still I was absolutely amazed with it.
I see this car as something very special, very unusual. But for some reason, Monica calls this car an amazingly beautiful freak. That's right, this car is so ugly that it's just amazing. It's not ugly, it's cool. The interior. When you face it for the first time, you get this wow effect. Even though it's obvious that these materials are not that expensive, this leather is not what you get in some luxurious premium car. That's what you have to agree with. But after a couple of days, you get used to it. And this car loses everything that could surprise or amaze you. When I first saw these wooden elements, I liked them a lot. And I still do, but now I know they are not wooden. And that makes me sad. Also, the fact that there is no way to cover this sunroof with anything is very uncomfortable. What if I don't want to sit under the sun for the whole day? The seats are quite comfortable, but they really lack any extra lateral support. This is the navigation system, and it doesn't seem to understand where it is and what it is. And this is good. At least I guess so. Because in case if it finally knows where it is, I'm afraid they will simply block the car somehow. And that's not gonna be good anymore. That's gonna be very disappointing. But I'm afraid they can't do that, because officially this car cannot be sold in Russia. And every time this message scares the shit out of me. Because I always imagine how it updates itself and says, wait a minute, you're in Russia. Go f*** yourself, the car is blocked forever. And no, they didn't forget to sign the buttons on this steering wheel. They are not signed for a reason, because they are adjustable. These buttons may perform different functions depending on the menu. I can adjust the height of the steering wheel with it. But if I go to the mirror settings, I'll be controlling the left one with this scroll wheel and the right one with that scroll wheel. Another feature is a car wash. It turns off all the sensors and the buttons from the outside of the car, which prevents them from the accidental pressing. If it mistakes the water jet for a finger tap, for example. And this function is also very interesting. It logs everything that happens to the car. And I literally mean everything. It's got plenty of cameras and it will record everything around it. And I find that very comfortable, because if some of your neighbors accidentally hit your car with his door or anything of that kind, you can clearly see that and provide evidence and kick his ass for a reason. And this function levels up the suspension, in case if the surface you stopped your car on is not smooth enough. Let's imagine there is some slope or a hill. The sensors of the car will calculate the position of the wheels and then will level up the position of the car's body. Then there is a climate control system, but you won't find anything unusual there. It's very intuitive and simple. And while we have been standing here, the car has gained another 17 miles of charge, and that was goddamn fast. But I have to admit that we are charging it at one of the fastest charging stations in Moscow. Maybe it's even the fastest charging station in Russia. At least as long as I know it. You just think about it, this company has just appeared. They came to the market like yesterday. I know they have been making some vans for the Amazon, and they were supposed to make like 100,000 of them. But I'm not sure whether they have succeeded, or they simply reduced the volume of their production. What I'm saying is that that all of these small genius things are made by them for the first time. Does it look fresh? Yes. Does it attract people's views? Sure. Is it unique? Of course. Is it dangerous? Very. Because if you accidentally update it being in Russia, I'm afraid you're gonna become an owner of a huge metal brick. I wish we could make such cars in Russia. Ok, right now we are about to check whether it's really capable of accelerating to 60 in 3 seconds. And I know what it feels like, because I've driven a BMW CS. But this car doesn't feel that fast at all. I mean, it does feel fast and it's confident, but it's like closer to 3.6 or 3.5 maybe, and it's not even 3.3. So it's definitely slower than 3.2 or 3 seconds sharp. I would even say it's closer to 4. Ok, let's switch off the stabilization. And make the suspension as low as possible, like this. All the necessary modes are on, let's go! The wind is blowing from every single hole. This car really is a tin can, and the steering wheel brings no confidence at all. It's only 85 miles per hour, but the car doesn't hold the road. And the hood cover frightens me. It's bouncing, it doesn't seem to be solid. The top speed is limited to 112 miles per hour. The TRX does 118. So, the steering, I will give it 2 out of 10. If we talk about the suspension, I would say this car is an absolute bastard. It's just a bastard. This car is a twin copy of a BMW iX. 
I just cannot believe the steering of this car is same stupid. Okay, let's go on. The noise insulation is 3 out of 10. If we switch to the interior, the quality of the materials are like 4 out of 10. I guess I could give it 8 out of 10 for the visibility. The rear window is too small. And I would give it 9 out of 10 for its appearance. But that bouncing hood cover reminds me of a bastard from Japan. Hello, motherfucker. But still, I'm not gonna say this car is bad. Cause it's not. This car is incredible. And it's one of the most amazing cars I've been driven for the last 10 or even 12 months. And I'll tell you why. But this is the first car company that managed to build such a cool car. With the first shot, this is their first car. Okay, Lucid was the first company, these guys are the second. And Lucid is kinda cooler and faster, and it's made with much higher quality than this car. If we talk about the quality, this car is in the middle between the Tesla and the Lucid. But if you expect for some higher quality for this money, or if you expect to get the coolest and the most interesting car in the world, you may stay disappointed. All I can say now is that the wow effect that I really got with the first sight happened mostly because of my expectation. You know, all these 835 horsepower. But still, when I'm flooring a 3-ton cycle called Ramped RX, I hear the sound of its compressor. I hear the sound of its exhaust. When this huge mess of metal suddenly takes off, the feelings and the emotions from it are not less cooler than from this car. And even despite its being lighter and its center of gravity is lower, because its battery is down there and all that stuff and blah blah blah, still it's impossible to make your car seems terrible and agile as Germans do, without any of their huge experience. That's just impossible to make with a first shot. It's impossible to kick with two feet into this industry and tear everyone apart. This is some incredible result for your first automobile. This is insane. So I take my head off and applaud this Rivian. I'm surprised and amazed with it. But every car's got some disadvantages. So far, getting it here is way too expensive. I can't even tell you the final price, because the currency exchange rate is very unstable now. All I can say is that for now it's overpriced. However, it's the same story with the TRX. But the TRX is the car that's definitely gonna be running for the next 5, 6 or 8 years without any problems. And it's not difficult to maintain. On the other hand, this car's got 1200 horsepower. Do I need it? Well, I would say yes, sure, why not? But it's impossible to realize the full potential of such power in this car. Simply because when you accelerate faster than 90 miles per hour, it becomes absolutely unsteerable. And imagine you are driving it on some rough road under bad weather condition, like rain, snow or black ice. I wouldn't dare driving it. But driving this car in the city is pretty okay, there is nowhere to hurry, there is no need to floor it. And we are just calmly driving it, obeying the road rules. <sighs> it's time to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep because it turns into a regular car that drives you to work. We still have 245 miles of driving range, and we can run around the city like a couple of times, even no matter whether we obey the road rules or start flooring it and test it the way we usually do. That's gonna be enough even if we go off-road, I guess. It's got no problems with that. Okay, so far, this car is not perfect. But according to how deeply and attentively they approached the development of their very first automobile, I'm more than sure they're gonna take into account the information and the feedback from their clients. Because still there are things that look a bit raw. Of course, there are just the small things like this rubber seal that gets chewed by the window. And there are also some issues with the painting. And as always, the gaps are not perfect. But in general, there is nothing I wouldn't expect. Like here, for example, there are miscalculations where the parts don't fit well. But still, it's a great job for the first automobile. Even though it's being a seven-seater car. Just looking at it, I would never have thought it is. And that's a good point to buy it if you've got a big family. And if you want to stay in touch with the future, I would recommend buying it. I mean, this body, not the pickup. But still, I don't know how it's gonna behave itself on the distance. So guys, don't blame me if it turns into a potato in a couple of years. I don't provide any warranty for it, as well as I'm not gonna advise buying it. This is just a review. In the beginning of this test drive, I was sure I'm gonna buy one of these for myself. In my head, I was already selling my TRX. But now I understand that buying a TRX was a pretty right choice. And I'm gonna keep it. I don't think I believe anyone's gonna present some breakthrough technologies in automotive industry, because the only thing they can surprise us so far with is just the power of their engines and the amount of extra options. But the main concept is still unchanged. Basically, it's still the same. See ya!